Implementing dual security can be tricky, especially if you need your existing features to work alongside Duo. My name is Ahmad and today we will be looking at how to configure the group lock feature with the Cisco ASA alongside the Duo's multi-factor authentication. This video is both for the IT guys who are going to deploy Duo with the ASA or who have already deployed it and need to learn how to use the group lock feature with Duo in place. Let me show you what we will be covering in this video. We will have an overview of our ASA's initial configuration for any connect tunnel groups. We will see the issue without having group locking feature enabled on the Cisco ASA and its impact. After that, we will enable the group locking feature for the local users residing in the local database of the ASA. We will then see the different Duo designs and see what are the limitations with the Duo proxy design. Then we will configure LDAP S, which is LDAP Secure via the CLI for the Duo Cloud. And we'll also test users on the cloud from our CLI. Lastly, we will have a look at how Cisco ICE authentication with group locking feature works with Duo security for the ASA. In the description of the video, I have timestamps, so if you want to go to a certain part of the tutorial, you can click on the timestamp and it will go directly to that part of the tutorial. And if I go too fast or too slow for you, you can adjust the speed of the video over here. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment below this video. Let's get started. Okay, so we have our ASA V. This is a virtual ASA that is running in my environment. So I have that in place and let's go in the global uh, in the ASA and, and see show IP. So I've got this outside interface and an inside interface and a server interface. So my basically servers are connected on this interface on VLAN 35 and the outside is on VLAN 33, and I do have an inside subnet of 150, uh, 150.0 slash 24. So, so what's gonna happen is that I'm going to be doing any connect on this IP address from my uh, computer on which I am recording and showing you uh, this ASA. So, uh, sure run WebVPN. WebVPN has already been configured. Any connect connections uh, are established. So, sure run group. Let me show you the group policies I have created. I have two group policies, group, uh, uh, namely group two and group one. So, they're kind of like the same, just their ACLs are different. Uh, but the point here is obviously that we want a specific user to be group locked into a specific tunnel group and the tunnel group are uh, show run tunnel group these are the two tunnel groups um, for some reasons I don't know why but the tunnel group 2 uh, is first here and then we have tunnel group 1 here um, both are re re referring to uh, tunnel t group 2 is re referring to group 2 that I just showed you over here and um, and tunnel group 1 is referring to the group policy of group one that is here. So um, if I go to my, ah, uh, come on. There's a problem happening with my computer. I don't know what it is. Uh, I'll have to do any connect. If I do any, any connect, great. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, all right, there it is. If I do an any connect on 192.168.33.101, and I have actually specified the port 443. If I'm not wrong, it is over here. This is the WebVPN port. I've changed it uh, for some reason because it, it was in interfering with my ASDM port. So that is why I had to do that. Uh, so for some reasons, I'm just doing banging on this wall and I'm not getting my icons. There, there's a problem here right so let me just oh yeah that is a little bit better no it isn't uh, okay so i'll do i'll just do um any connect on that outside interface and let's see okay so i can connect 
to uh, my ASAV and um, let me show you I have the two tunnel groups I just showed you are, are, are coming up are popping up here I can select both of them uh, because now, not, not because I don't have any authentication commands over here, no, uh, no authentication triple or anything. So they're defaulting to the local database. So in the local database, I have some username password, but we're going to be creating a new one. Uh, I have a username that is uh, user one and user two. But let's uh, create an, another user. Hang on, I'll just. Uh, by the way, this is the duo panel. And in my second screen it is coming up nice. So let me do an any connect here. So, all right. Sorry about this fuss, but uh, I don't know why this is happening. So any connect, now, now that is better. So we'll be coming to the second screen to any connect to my ASAV whenever needed. So uh, first let's create, whoa, what is happening today? First, first, let's create a username. So I'll say username Ahmed and password also Ahmed. And okay, that's pretty much it. I think I don't need to specify anything else. Now let's do an any connect. And my ASDM is uh, saying that something has changed on the ASAV. So do you want to refresh? So I'll just close that for the time being. Let's connect that. So I have this username already because I was logging in previously and with the password of Emmet again. And I, I just have this uh, login banner <laughs> to not connect yeah, this. Okay. So it has been connected hopefully right now. So let me check that show VPN session DB any connect. So as you can see, it uh, Emma basically logged into the tunnel group of one and was assigned the group policy of one. So every policy that is in place, the tunnel groups and everything is in group one. So you could have a scenario where uh, different groups obviously have different policies and the tunnel groups kind of tie between them. So uh, this tunnel group is tying to group one. And uh, the problem here is that Emmet can log in to both the tunnel groups because there is no group locking. Uh, let's do a connect again and let me just show you the problem first of all and then we'll go and uh, ahead and implement the solution then we'll go towards do a security. So connect anyway I'll just go to group 2 to your tunnel group 2 and say Emmet. That's the password. Do not connect the banner which I have no idea why I have configured. Uh, okay so Let's do that again. Now, as you can see, now Emma is connected to tunnel group two and the group policy is group two. So anything that any split tunneling and anything configured on this side is being implemented on this username. So now I want to group lock Emma first of all. So how do I do that? First of all, let me do a uh, disconnect here and Okay, going to configure to terminal. Sorry about that voice. Uh, okay, so, so we're going to go into username Ahmed attributes. This is the command. So I want to specify some specific attributes uh, like, uh, like the group block. You could actually specify multiple attributes for the time being. I'm just doing this. Uh, for group law, you, you can obviously set it to only remote uh, VPNs. Uh, but for this tutorial sake, let me just do a group lock and I'm going to be locking to the tunnel group of one. So you have to specify the tunnel group if you are doing group locking. If you're doing uh, group policy locking in which you don't have that drop down that you see uh, over here. Uh, this is the drop down that you see um, when you have tunnel groups enabled, both on the web VPN and on the tunnel groups. So if you don't have this drop down, then you can use this group policy, VPN group policy attribute. For the time being, I'm not going to do that. So I'm just locking Emma to the one group, tunnel group one. So let's try that again. Let's try to authenticate right now on tunnel group two. And as you can see, login has failed. 
And let's try tunnel group one. So pretty much you can authenticate on that. So that is how you do tunnel grouping. Uh, and that was fairly easy. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be implementing dual security with this. But before that, I, I want you to know there is a design constraint, um, not a constraint, but what design I am following right now. I want to show you that design. That design is in the documentation. If I go to remote access and VPNs, um, primarily what design people normally follow is that of uh, that dual proxy. I think most of you who are listening to this video have deployed the dual proxy. So ASA SSL uh, uh, VPN using radius. So in which you have this dual proxy, if I could show you this diagram, uh, where that no, this is LDAP S, which we are going to be doing. This is the dual proxy design. So, so the, the, the connection comes up to the ASA, you can, as you can see, this is the first one, and then it sends it to uh, the authentication proxy via radius, and the proxy talks to the active directory via LDAP, and if user is being authenticated, it talks to its dual cloud. Now, when the response comes back to the dual uh, proxy, it returns the response to the Cisco ASA as an accept or a reject. But the problem with this authentication proxy, it, it, it's not very scalable. If any of you have worked with uh, ICE or ASA, uh, sorry, ACS, you know that there are a lot of attributes that, that you can push back to the Cisco ASA. So not in this case, because it's a proxy, right? So it's not a full blown radius server. So you can't actually do a lot with it. So what, what design we are following is uh, LDAP S. Now, uh, one keynote I would like to show you here. If your ASA is above version 8.13, and as you can see over here, sorry, I meant 9.13 or above. Sorry about that, 8. Um, if you have that ASA, then it basically checks the certificate uh, when you're doing authentication by LDAP S. So you have to install the certificate uh, on the ASA. I'm not going to be showing you that here. If if you need to um, do this or you know, on your own, because this is basically what we're going to be following the Cisco ASA SSL VPN per browser and then you connect uh, via LDAP. Basically, it's via LDAP here. So you can follow this video It's pretty. It's a pretty good video, video I would say you can actually achieve um, everything with this video. But what I'm trying to emphasize here is the group lock feature. Now, um, where's the design? Let me uh, get the design, which I'm not getting here. Actually, it was the on the previous page, I guess. It's not here. Let me go to the previous page and the previous page again. And where is it? Yes, there it is. It is SSL we've been using LDAP as this is the design that we are going, going to be following and in which you don't have any dual proxy because that is a limitation for us and we're not going to do that. So what happens is that it has two rounds of authentication and I basically have a blog on this on my website and I will leave the link in the description for you to read that out. Um, so basically the ASA is acting as kind of like the proxy. You could call that a proxy. I mean, the thing that the feature which was implemented in the proxy, now the ASA itself is doing that. But problem is people really misunderstand this. Okay. There are two rounds of authentication when you're doing this sort of deployment. Okay. The first round is always either local or, or the AAA. So there are two rounds, okay? Uh, the second round is with the dual proxy. So the first round, we are just working on the first round over here. Now we're moving on to the second round, which is LDAP S. And if you want a full blown configuration guide, you can follow the duo documentation. It's pretty neat and good, I would say. Uh, you can follow that and you can also configure the same process for SSL VPNs um, or, 
or uh, quote unquote the web VPNs in which you have only the browser. We're gonna be just doing this for the AnyConnect VPN, which is the client VPN. Now for the second round of authentication, if you're doing this via CLI, uh, these are the commands. These are pretty easy commands. It, if you have any idea how to configure a AAA server, it's pretty good. Um, uh, what it is, is that we're saying that we're gonna be um, configuring a AAA server named DuoLDAP and the pro protocol will be LDAP. So this is kind of the group that we create first of all, and then we can assign multiple servers obviously uh, inside the group. So normally we would have an IP address here, uh, like 192.168, the, the IP address of the AAA server uh, in your environment. So in this case, we have a host name. Now to really understand what I'm trying to do it, is I'm trying to make my ASA talk to the Duo Cloud. Now, if I go to the Duo Cloud, first of all, uh, I have these applications uh, in which you want to protect some applications. Uh, in other words, you want to enable multi-factor authentication with Duo. Then you actually have these applications. Now, if you go to the documentation, which I showed you, uh, they will act exactly refer you to this, to this, <laughs> this, this VPN, okay? So let's take out our notepad. Now the thing is, it's looking good right now. Okay, um, the API host name is basically the host name that we have configured here. If you look at it, it, they're exactly the same. Timeout 60 because I want the request not to time out for the users. So so the time uh, should, should be longer. And especially if you have any connect, you have to go to the, your any connect profile and make make a profile that at least awaits 60 seconds. Again, the Duo documentation covers that as well. So server port, this is a little bit different uh, because we have LDAP S. So the port is different for LDAP S. So we're gonna, we are gonna be using that. So as it's uh, LDAP, so we're gonna be using uh dcs okay remember those ou cns and dcs so that's basically the concept again uh if you have uh, if you don't have that much of an idea on ldap maybe i'll just do a video on ldap later uh but the thing is that uh you have to configure ldap based in as normally you would do for for example if if my domain was doctornetworks.com, I would say DC doctor networks, DC com. So kind of like that. So so inside you, you have your integration key. So, so, so your integration key basically goes over here um, in the first DC. And then, then you have that uh, DC is equal to dual security, DC is equal to com. And the LDAP naming attribute is common name. That is basically the name that will be coming in um or what i will be typing in like the ml so that will be the common name that will be uh sent to the duo cloud the login password don't get confused by these five stars they actually do make it a five star in reality it's a huge key if i would um, show you that key uh you could also actually <laughs> configure this on your side and you can uh you know do some hits so I won't mind that. So, um, okay, so, so that is where the password goes. And LDAP login DN, again, for logging in, you have to assign the same DN, uh, DCs, that you assign for the base DN. And in the end, you have to do LDAP over SSL enable. Again, this is 9.12 version of the ASA. Um, so so um, it's not gonna check that certificate that is being presented by the Duo Cloud. So if you have 9.13 uh, and above, be sure to check that documentation and install the certificate for it to work properly. So we have this configuration already on our ASA. So show run, I'll do LA, uh, first of AAA, AAA server. So as you can see, I have these configurations already in place and pretty much okay. Now, um, Ahmed is a username that is already present inside of um, uh, this Duo Cloud and has been activated. Remember to activate your users first if you try to do uh, like 
an authentication without that user being enabled it's gonna fail okay to test our configuration from the cli right now i want to see um, that if i can authenticate ahmed right now from my cli uh, re remember those commands of test triple a so we're going to be use using those commands for i'm, I'm going to be saying test triple a uh, server so it's going to ask me for what are you going to be doing i'm going to be doing authentication test with, uh, for the server group of duo ldap so there it is do LDAP and what is going to be the host because you could have multiple servers inside a group. Uh, the host is going to be this API blah 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 dualsecure.com. Now, remember one thing here your ASA obviously does need internet access plus DNS resolution. If it doesn't have those, it's not going to work. Okay, so it's kind of like you as Maybe you're on your Windows and you're trying to access Duo Cloud. And if domain resolution is not working because their IPs could change, this IP uh, API's IP could change on the back end. So that would be a problem. So, okay. Uh, then we have the username that we're going to be using. That is Ahmed. And now you're going to be asking what the password is. Now the thing is, when you configure Duo on a mobile, they basically give you two to three options and one of them is the passcode now um i i don't have this phone connected oh uh, give me a second okay so i went ahead and actually uh config i mean configured my phone for wiser and to actually show you that what i am doing so do mobile so can you see the passcode for some reasons uh no, you can't see it. Damn it. Why not? I don't know. You can't actually see the duo. This was a problem that came up a year back too, and they didn't fix it. What a bummer this is. Well, I'm really sorry, man. I can't actually show you because it's not popping up. Uh, but the thing is, there is a passcode. Maybe they have this on security or something. Uh, they have a passcode given to me that is uh, 042 and this changes all the time uh, oops okay the passcode is 042537 now it's attempting to authenticate and taking long oh there it is so authentication was successful and if I were to show you on the Duo Cloud what happened on the dashboard, you may see there are um, there is obviously an authentication request, a uh, mobile passcode, location unknown, whatever it was. So uh, the time is a little bit off here. So it was happening, okay. Uh, it happened. So the Duo Cloud was working fine. Now the problem is I have I have set up the group logging with local authentication. Now, how do I set up the um, the second authentication mechanism? How do I do that? Now, it's really, really simple. Uh, let me show you what the command is. It's a pretty simple command. And that is this, uh, secondary authentication server group duo LLAB use primary username. Basically, what it is saying is saying that, okay, I'm going to be using the primary username as a username. And the password is going to be something else like a push like an sms like a phone call like a passcode and i'm going to be showing you how you can do that uh, okay where do i put this command first of all show run tunnel group going to tunnel group you have to put this in the tunnel group uh right here i guess wait a second oh no i just copied this one okay no no issues it happens uh okay so we have this uh authentication server group command here so you just use that and you're going to be referring to do show run what was that triple a server there is no do in the asa show run triple uh triple a dash server so the name was dual app up arrow 
Oh no, I'm doing it all wrong. I'm doing it all wrong. <laughs> if I if I do this right now, the primary authentication will be duo. So I don't have I, I shouldn't do that. I should go back and the command I just copied here. I'm gonna copy that and paste it right here. This command applies only to client list and any connect VPN. Uh, alrighty. So so there it is. Now I applied this command to tunnel group two. Let's do the same to tunnel group one because Ahmed is a group uh, is a member of tunnel group one. And mm, 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 where did it go? Where did the command go? There it is. It's a long command. That's why it's not showing up as much. The so show run tunnel group. Let's do it again and see. I got both of the secondary. Remember, this is the second round of authentication, not the first. The first is the local authentication. Now, now when I do, hopefully when I do, any connect. Oops, I'm already connected. Let me just do uh, reconnect. Okay. Now, as you can see, I have this multi-factor authentication, which doesn't pop up, by the way, by default. Remember this. This is something I've amended to work like this, okay? I will show you in the end how do you do this, but um, in your case, it's going to say second password. It's not going to say multi-factor -authent multi authentication because I have actually amended it. So first let's do um, tunnel group two. I'm gonna connect to tunnel group two and the username and password was Ahmed Ahmed. And in this multi-factor authentication part, what you have, you have two to three options. Let me just show you those, those options here. You have, mm -hmm. uh, wait a second, let me just show you really quick. What are the options? It's kind of like this documentation is a little bit a smush, I would say, or maybe I'm making it a smush. I'm really sorry about that if you if this is confusing you in any case. Um, in the last bit of there it is. So you could do you you could write. You have to specifically write on the secondary or multi-factor authentication password. You have to put in push or a phone or an SMS or a numeric code. So in our case, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a do a push. So let's do that again uh, because it's going to be timed out. So I only have 60 seconds. So, all right. So tunnel group one, uh, tunnel number two, I'm going to be trying first of all. Ahmed Ahmed is a username password, multi-factor authentication, push. I'm writing push right now and uh, saying, okay, now, I've got a do authentication request. Uh, wait a second. There, there has been a request. Oh, login failed. Okay. Even though do authentication requests do come up, the problem is that your your Ahmed, the specific username, is not part of Tunnel Group Two. It's not. It's locked to Tunnel Group One, so it's not going to happen. Let me show you that again. So I'm doing a push. As I do uh, right push, I have, oh, there, there, there's a login failed again. But I do get a, a do a request, which I cannot show you because my mobile isn't working that much. I do get a do a push on my phone, but it doesn't work this way. So let's do tunnel group one, username and password Ahmed. And again, I'm typing in push. Okay. And I'm getting a push and I'm proving it. And there it is. Do not connect. <laughs> so, so you're basically now mapped uh, to tunnel group one, even though the duo push came out for the tunnel group two as well. But because that was a secondary authentication, well, it shouldn't re really happen. I would say um, it shouldn't really go to the duo cloud. It should just say log and fail. But eventually, it does fail, even if it goes to the dual cloud. Eventually it does fail, so that's that's okay uh, for me, uh, I would say. Uh, any connect, as you can see, uh, they are connected. Now, our next part is, and this video is getting long, 
uh, with AAA. Behold the ice, Cisco's ice. Uh, so in the Cisco ice, um, first of all, again, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be do, uh, do doing the primary or the first round of, of authentication as Cisco ISC AAA authentication. The second round is still the same. So you're going to be um, getting those duo requests. Um, but, the, but the primary authentication mechanism uh, is changing now. I will show you how to change that. Now, I'll just go to administration. I already added the ASAV device. So it's already in my uh, network devices. So we'll leave that to be. And I actually have a loose policy that I created. Uh, but I'll just show you what I have. Um, the main thing that you need to do in Cisco ICE is you need to uh, return some attributes to the ASAV. Remember that. That is the only goal, actually, which the dual proxy service doesn't do. Now, if you go to authorization profiles, and it's like creating ACLs and all, um, but it's not applying them. So I have one group lock or class created. So it's pretty simple. We just create a new authorization profile. And what do you do? You have two places that you can specify some attributes for specifically for the ASA. One, in, one is in the common tasks. Now, ASA VPN, this basically is emphasizing group policy, okay? what group policy will be applied because remember now we are kind of like hmm i would place it this way we are dependent on the cisco isc to tell us like everything what we want to do what it wants us to do actually so ice will tell the asa hey asa hey mr asa you have to put this specific user which i will match on specific criteria onto um in the group policy group of one plus you need to group log it in the tunnel group two now this is an advanced attribute i'll just hover over this and as you can see it's an attribute of vpn 3000 cvpn blah 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 blah, blah tunnel group lock um i'm not sure what, what the number of this attribute is i'll just mention it in the video over here somewhere uh, that will be mentioned what the attribute number is um, but the thing is these are the two key elements if you are going for group logging with a AAA server okay so let's head over to our uh, policies policy sets now I have a lazy kind of policy set created over here what I basically did is I added the ASA and um, made a device type asav that i just created myself um, and anything that matches that device type which is let me show you here in the administration network devices if i do an edit here hmm as you can see i have actually uh, uh, made a device type myself and that is called the asav you could call it security firewalls whatever you want to call them and I just matched on that and, and simply matching on that is really not that good uh, but I'm just doing this for the lab purpose that's why I, I actually don't really care so any ASA traffic that comes in it's gonna be boom going to this policy set and going into this authentication and authorization uh, uh, sequence I would call it so let's go to authentication policy and what we have here is what it's gonna check it's gonna check the internal users if Emma is present in the internal users then it's gonna be authenticated let's do a duplicate that and uh, let me show you is Emma present or not or is it absent um, all right let's go to administration and identities so in the identities I have Emma over here and I guess the uh, username is Cisco either one, two, three, four, um, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I have actually forgotten that username and its password, but still, I'll try that. Uh, so that takes care of authentication. Now, the main 
policy is authorization. No, this, no, no. Uh, what do I say, man? This is the laziest thing I've ever done. I'm matching on a ASV. I mean, what on earth am I doing? It means that anything that comes up here is going to be matched. <laughs> so actually, that is what I want for this lab. You could actually go here um, in the administration, administration tab and go to external identity sources and you can configure your Active Directory, which I have already configured mine. Uh, and you can call in groups. Um, here, here they are. So there are Dr. Network's domain user groups are, are being called. I can match based on that and that that's how it should be actually. And if I have local users, I would create local user groups here and call them in into the policies. I mean, you could get really granular with that. So I am not actually getting that much granular here. I mean, I'm not getting granular at all. What I'm doing is I'm saying that anything that comes up, you just have to push that policy over there and put them in the tunnel group one. And I'll just do that for, for Ahmed. You can have different user groups, as I told you. How would you do that? Uh, user groups configured here and different tunnel groups policies for each of them. You get it? For group one, tunnel group one. For group two, tunnel group two, like that, okay? So for this scenario, I'm not gonna be doing anything else. You already know this authorization policy. This, by the way, is the authorization policy that we uh, saw earlier. So I'm not going to amend that. Now, what is to be done on the ASA side? It's really simple. You have to add a AAA server. Uh, okay, I already have that one, I think. Yeah, so so there it is. So I have AAA server ice radius. Protocol is radius. So AAA ice underscore radius server host is this. This is my ICE's IP address, as you can see from this browser. It is present, and the key is Cisco. The, the mighty key of Cisco. Okay, um, if you have that already set, what we can do right now is test if Ahmed can be authenticated from the AAA server. So how did we do that previously? Where is the command? There it is. So I'll do Cisco. Cisco either one, two, three, four. I know, I know, I have to go back and specify the um, radius server group and that is IEC underscore radius and the host is gonna be the radius server IP address um, if you had DNS or, or anything that you could also put the DNS name here 192.168.35.199 and fingers crossed I am not sure if, if, if this will work or not oh <laughs> what do you know it worked that is great. Now logs will show up over here, I guess. Uh, some logs should come up. Okay, okay. Yeah, there it is. So you can see the log has been popped up. And actually, um, it's hitting that policy, that group log policy already, because I've not actually configured the way it should be. Uh, but you could do that. And if you have any problems with that, you can uh, leave a comment or uh, email me your question regarding that okay so uh, what else would we have All right uh, now we just need to apply this because it's working so tunnel group first of all I'll just get rid of the clear configure uh, username which is name Ahmed so all everything related to Ahmed is gone so if I do a show username Ahmed it's it's gone nothing uh, of Ahmed exists on this local database so we're getting rid of the local database here so show run tunnel group now uh, we have the secondary authentication coming up now it's time for the primary authentication so we go into tunnel group attributes and say where is the authentication server group authentication server group and it's gonna be I'll forget this names. There it is. I server. Boom. And specifically, I would also go to one. I've forgotten to go to one and do the same. Alrighty. Now it's time for testing.
Now let's go to uh, our AnyConnect again. Where is it? Our AnyConnect. We are already connected, so let's disconnect from here and do a connect again. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of like uh, in a chill mood right now, so that's why I'm singing. Okay, channel group one or two, whatever it is. So Ahmed and password is Cisco right there, one, two, three, four. It's not Ahmed now. And do a do a push. Okay. 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 Let's see. Hmm. I uh, got it. Got the duo. Approved. Uh okay. It did it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Let's do we'll do it again. No, obviously there's gonna be problems. There's never gonna be a piece of cake. It's failing. The login is failing for some reasons. Now, if you want, you can see me troubleshoot this. Uh, and let's see what, what happened, what actually is happening. Now, this guy is telling me that the authentication is working really fine here. Um, and he's being detected and everything. But the problem is something else. Possibly, possibly something is wrong with those authorization policies. Now... Let me check that real quick. Oh, I'm sorry. This shouldn't be it. Actually, now what what's happening is it, it's working the other way around. Uh, but it shouldn't be like this. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> oh my God. Let me just amend this real quick. So it's on group one. Do a save. And it's automatically being populated. Now let's do... Uh, where is it? Uh, there is any connect. Let's do it again. It should work now, hopefully, because it was tunnel group locked to the other group. That is why it wasn't working. So connect that. And Cisco add there one, two, three, four, and do a push. I'm writing a push here, okay? You have to write yourself a push. Okay, okay, uh, approve, got the request, and please, please, oh, sorry, all right, that is great, that has worked like a charm, hasn't it, uh, okay, um, just do a little bit more test, um, I would really want to test if it, it was, Actually, I, I should have shown you the VPN database. Sorry about that. Let me just do a, a failure here. Let's do a Cisco add there. One, two, three. Oh, sorry. I should have done that. Tunnel group two. Cisco add there. One, two, three, four. Do a push here. I'm writing a push here, okay? The, the, I'm literally writing P-U-S-H, okay? You could write S-M-S -S as well, I think. I think you can write SMS as well. These are the things that you could write over here on the second password. This, this is uh, basically how you actually see it. And in the last few minutes, I'll show you how to change that. Uh, SMS, phone, and push. This is, this is basically what you could do. So again, let's go to this guy and say, do a push. I just wasted some time here. Let's see if it works or not. Tap, notification, approve, approving, it's, it should fail right now, yeah, it failed, that is great, so let's do this again one more time, just go add there, one, two, three, four, push, okay, I'm getting a push again on my phone, you have to trust me on this, I am getting the push, and I'm proving that, so I've proved that, and I'm in. All right, sweet. Now let me show you the show uh, show VPN uh, session any connect. Uh, it's actually showing me that hey, we're done. Okay, so, so as you can see, the tunnel group is one and the group is one. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be leaving that document or my my blog in the description showing you how you can change the uh, first of all how you can see the pre-login banner uh, which is the banner you see over here uh, you can
put in instructions on what to write in the multi-factor authentication part uh, and I can show you in that document or blog how to change this to something else. So, so that's it for today. I hope you have liked this video. And if you have, do like, share, and comment, and subscribe. Subscribe. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.